Good morning friends and welcome back to NPTEL online certification course on public speaking. In the previous lecture, we talked about positive thinking or the role of positivity in public speaking. My dear friends, we could also see what were the certain ways to bring positivity. I mean, as a public speaker, one has got the content, but while delivering the content, how one can remain positive throughout. I mean, in this lecture, we are actually going to talk about the significance of oral citations in public speaking. All of you are well aware of the fact that as a public speaker, one may come across myriad of topics and while everyone is not a know it all and that is why when you prepare for a talk, you actually go to gather data. We have already talked about how one can organize the data after gathering the data and how one can go to bring all sorts of data, pieces of information on a particular topic with the help of library, with the help of books. Now here one can see that one wants one's talk or presentation to be logical coherent and committed and that is why one has to do a lot of research. Once a person has already organized the content and he is ready to deliver, then if he has a look at the content, he actually finds at different places that if he could bring some good sentences some good quotes, some statistical data, some sayings of wise people and one actually quotes it. Now, there is some amount of difference when we talk about citations. These citations can be both in a written document and it can also be in an oral document. All of us know that public speaking is a sort of oral activity and so while we are having a sort of public speaking or a talk or a presentation or speech, in order to make our talk beautiful, in order to talk, make it attractive and pleasing for the ears of our audience, we actually have to bring some very good citations. Now, why these citations? In order to make our talk as I have been saying effective, one actually has to make it pleasing to the ears of the audience and it is for this reason that a conscious, seasoned and effective speaker takes care of bringing certain citations in his work so that the overall impact becomes very interesting. Citations not only from others works or writings, but citations actually lend credibility to the speaker. It actually tells the speaker how well read, how well researched, how familiar he is with the topic. One also gets the impression of one's knowledge, the way one has prepared, tailored and brought citations in one's speech or one's talk. Now, you might all be thinking about what is actually a citation. People who are carrying out their researches and writing papers, they also must be familiar with how with every research paper, they bring some documentation. 
I mean because a research paper is the culmination, combination and mix of the knowledge and also the mix of supplementary materials in order to make one's research work effective and relevant. So, in this regard let us see what citation does mean according to Merriam Webster's dictionary the word citation actually implies an act of quoting. So, as a researcher you quote you actually supplement your line of thinking with the help of a quotation or with the help of what others have said on this topic. However, citation does not merely include quoting experts, quoting excerpts or statements when it comes to public speaking. Rather, citation also includes verbally acknowledging someone's ideas, someone's works, someone's contribution, findings, report, etcetera. That is why when one gets a new topic, the first need that one feels to understand is how much has been done or worked on this topic. So, when he goes to the library, he consults the related papers and then find, tries to find out uh, where are the gaps, what new thing he is going to do. Actually, citation is an ethical duty for a speaker to provide the audience with access to the source in any form of presentation or medium. I mean every authentic work you can come across has got several citations. The same is true when one is giving a public speech or a talk where he tries to corroborate, where he tries to supplement his own line of thinking with the help of what others or what other experts have done in this regard. Now, Patterson mentions two types of citation, narrative citation and parenthetical citation. Patterson found that citing is actually fun. It could also be said that citing is sometimes perplexing. We are living in an age where we cannot make others published work saying it or claiming it as own. Otherwise, this will lead to a sort of plagiarism. Now, it is time that we understood the difference between citing orally and citing in the written form. Because here we are talking about public speaking and in public speaking a person has to speak and while speaking how he can cite. So, when somebody is citing in the written way, there are several ways you can come across while some is writing something and he can cite. Uh, in text, I mean within the text he will also cite fine, within the body of the written uh, report. Full length citations, they are attached only at the end of the document. Whereas, when you do it in the oral form or I mean oral citation, source actually should be fully cited with reference to the author's name. You might have always heard people saying that Shakespeare says in one of his plays that fine. So, what is it? It is actually a case of citing. Sometimes you can also find that people writing according to Mr. X, according to Mr. Y. So, when you are citing orally, you need to mention the author's name and the date of the source following the quotation or paraphrase employed during public speaking. Here you can find an example. The example has been provided uh, both for the written citation and oral citation. So, while in written citation you can find in text citation especially in MLA style where you write something and in the midst of your writing you can write under bracket the person uh, that you have some way or the other referred to. Say for example, 
public speakers usually refrain from citing sources as referring to be borrowed from a larger and unreliable domain like the web or internet. Now, this is in the written form where we can call it in text citation and from where it has been taken? It has been taken from Lukács book, The Art of Public Speaking and then the page number is also mentioned. Of course, when we do it in the form of oral one, we do not mention the page number, but in written also we can have full citation. Once we can have in text citation and then we can also have full citation. When we have full citation, we must mention the name of the author, the name of the book, the name of uh, the publisher and then the year of publication and then the page number. On the other hand, when you are going to cite orally, you can say it like this, you can include it like this saying, Stephen Lukacs in the 10th edition of his book, The Art of Public Speaking, published in the year 2008, speaks of the redundancy of saying statements like, as I found on the web or according to the internet. Now, you can also see, we can always say according to the internet, according to Lecoq's, fine. So, this is how. Now, when one is going to cite orally, one has to be very careful because you know citation whether uh, if it is in the written form, you can consider that when without seeking the prior permission of somebody you have cited and not acknowledged, then it is actually a, a, a sort of uh, plagiarism. Here you can say it is a sort of stealing fine and then it is not considered uh, to be a uh, good. So, as a speaker, what are we trying to become? We are trying to become a speaker who is credible. Credibility is the hallmark of an effective speaker. So, you have to decide whether you want to be a credible speaker or an incredible speaker or a speaker who simply does not want rather simply speaks by borrowing from others. All of us as I have been saying take ideas from others, but what is the harm if we simply acknowledge. In our, uh, our first uh, week's lecture, uh, we have also mentioned, we have talked about ethics. We also discussed how ethics plays a vital role in carrying the message of the speaker. Actually, whatever we say, we want to be supported. We actually want a sort of evidential support if we are citing from others. So, from authentic sources, because it will boost their own unique message uttered in public speaking. Have you not at times listened to a person who quotes from different sources? Somebody says, as Arjuna says in the Mahabharata, fine. Now, it actually gives you some inkling of the person as how he or she has read or has access to the Mahabharata. Then somebody may say, as mentioned in the Vedas. So, as a speaker, you actually get to know about his credibility and about his knowledge. So, an experienced speaker, a seasoned speaker would show themselves as different from ordinary speakers by equipping or by including credible sources for supporting their delivery. I have been time and again saying that no man is a know it all. A know it all is a person who believes that he knows everything. But as a speaker, when we cite from the works of others, not only are we acknowledging the sort of knowledge that they have lent to, rather we are also showing how updated we ourselves are. So, a public speaker is entitled to trace out the authenticity of sources because when you go to the library or when you are culling some information from some sources, nowadays many of us without bothering about the authenticity of any piece of information, we actually bring it. But my dear friends, as a well aware researched fine topic, 
it has actually the demands of some authentic information and that is why as a speaker too we need to find out the authenticity of sources which actually can be mentioned through the means of oral citations. Now, while we have already talked about credibility in some of the previous lectures, as an oral speaker or as a speaker, we need to understand that while we are addressing the crowd or while we are delivering the speech, the speaker is bound to orally cite the sources from which he is quoting or rephrasing. There are two ways. If you are quoting the exact words, naturally then you say according to and then in the written form you write it under inverted commas or whatsoever. But then when you are rephrasing, then actually you are not going to tell the same, but you have your own words, but then you are telling the idea or sharing the idea of others. So, we say uh, that we have already an access to the information as shared in our religious books, namely in the Mahabharata, in the Gita, fine or in some other religious texts that it is karma that decides our own fine fate, is not it. Now, this has got some background information which we have taken from our religious texts. So, this is one way of citing, but if you are going to put it the way it is, then you are going to mention it. Of course, when you are writing it, you are writing it in the form of a quote. Many speakers while they are giving talks, they also say uh, rightly has John Keats said a thing of beauty is a joy forever, fine. Now, what it does? It actually not only corroborates your idea on uh, the issue of beauty, rather it also tells others that you have access to John Keats, you have access to some other authors. So, unlike in writing, oral citation as a task demands memory retention. Memory is very important my dear friends. Here you are not going to read everything uh, with the help of the paper. You have already found that seasoned speakers, they actually remember so many quotes. But remember, while you are quoting from somebody, quote the actual words. Otherwise, you know, it will appear to be half cooked. And if you forget in the middle, you may actually become a butt of laughter. So, unlike in writing the oral citation as a task demands memory retention of the speaker. So, majority of good speakers on this earth, they actually have a very good memory and when they quote uh, from some celebrated texts, from some classics, they ensure uh, they actually uh, retreat to their own memory. Oral citation gives a strong outlook and a support to the speaker. I mean, while your line of thinking, while your line of argument, you are with the help of the oral citation strengthening your own point of view, making your saying or your speech more credible, giving them a credible and a reliable image amongst listeners. The value of credibility does not just add on only to the speaker but also it helps to the topic of concern and you know it keeps the listeners tied, bound, confined, fine, glued to the topic. So, the listeners are throughout. If you, if you find uh, some of the speakers who actually are very famous, you will find why they are famous because their listeners, their audience members are so much lost in the thoughts of the speakers in the knowledge of the speaker that they feel uh, that it is time that they are lost. They find some food for thought in it. So, as a speaker, not only are you going to benefit out of it, but as an audience members, they also get a lot of information my dear friends, if you have uh, the accessibility to lots of references. A man of references can only be a man of knowledge. If somebody specializes in something, naturally he has at his back, 
He has in his memory several texts, several books, several critical works that he or she has read and that actually comes to his aid. That is why we say that when you are gripped with the fear of anxiety, you might realize how seasoned speakers, they never come across such a sort of situation because they know how to adapt themselves to by bringing some references or by bringing some quotes from some other texts. But provided they are actually relevant. Another question that you may come across, why cite orally? Is it actually essential to cite orally? Yes. If we can say in simple words, in order to avoid this menace of plagiarism and in order to create a sort of reliability, authenticity, it is better that we cite orally. Moreover, you cannot say everything only out of your own content. Have you not marked that a seasoned speaker not only speaks from the topic that he has brought or from the information, but he also refers to how does he refer to? He actually cites orally and brings in so many allusions and references. His original thoughts are less. Rather, the supplementary materials are too many. Most of the time, these public speakers, while addressing an event, they actually address an issue of pressing concern. Sometimes they may speak on a very present day uh, topic, say for example, pollution, say for example, uh, the uh, eco-critical imbalance, say for example, uh, the menace that is being created by noise. So, of course, ordinary things which can be said in a very factual manner may appear to be a very routine, ordinary unless and until they are supplemented by some beautiful quotations on the said issue and that can actually create, that can actually help you have an edge over others. During such situations, a proper background research has to be carried out. That is why it is essential that when one gets the topic, one needs to consult so many books and so many pieces of information either through library or through internet or through some authentic sources. The information gathered from such sources can be cited properly as a reference to the audience and you can also understand the result the moment you quote or the moment you make a mention of a beautiful quote and if some of the audience members have gotten access to it, you can find uh, the sort of credibility and the sort of exchange uh, in the form of a smile that generates and it actually spreads and makes uh, the entire atmosphere very pleasant. Now is the time also to understand how to prepare oral citations. My dear friends, one does not become a public speaker just in one day, one week, one month. One has to take several months to do it. And then somebody who is very conscious, every day he is conscious and even if he comes across a beautiful line, he will actually write in his notebook or diary or whatsoever. And then when the need arises, he may not have to go to a particular one. He simply can be reminded of and can bring his uh, bring in his content or talk while he is preparing that. So, employing oral citation, not only in his speech presentation and talk, but then it can provide an outlook amongst audience that the speaker is well versed, well researched, he has got a sort of control over this subject and the knowledge that he is going to share with us is going to be very relevant. So, while preparing a sort of oral citation, prepare a full reference list of works consulted and referred for your public speaking event. Of course, on certain occasions, they may seek your written speech as well and then you do not have to go an extra mile because you already have. Of course, while you are citing orally, you are not mentioning everything in course of uh, citing or in course of speaking, rather you simply make a mention of the name of the speaker or the name of the person who is speaking. So, this reference 
will benefit you in a number of ways. It will actually be helpful if any member from the audience raises a question and the person who has done uh, a good amount of research in this area can respond to questions. Otherwise, if simply you found the lines to be beautiful and are unaware of the references, perhaps you cut a very sorry figure, my dear friends. So, if you are using some visual aids, you must prepare some slides of written citation in a proper format. That is very important because that will come to your aid on a number of occasions. Now, you might also be thinking that when we cite, do we simply cite only the beautiful quotes which actually pleases uh, your ears, which actually creates a sort of musicality in your ears? No, it is not because you may also get an opportunity to speak on factual topics, everyday topics. You may also at times require the data fine. You may at times require the statistical data as well. You may also require at times the reports because many people may also say how can you claim this. So, employing oral citation in speech as I have been saying that not only does it provide an outlook amongst audience, but at the same time it actually tells that the speaker has done uh, a good uh, amount of research on it. But what are the things that can be cited orally? Quotations or quotes, fine. Statistics on a real topic, is not it? Research findings, fine. Nowadays, we are living in an age when we come across several problems, ecological imbalance, fine. How do you simply can say that ecological imbalance is more in urban areas than in rural areas. I think here you will have to have a sort of survey to support your line of thinking. And then laws and regulations, sometimes you may also have to refer to the laws and regulations and sometimes uh, government orders. My dear friends, imagine if you are delivering a talk on beauty or on truth, what could not be a better way than to bring in a citation from Nadine Godimer who says, truth is not always beauty, but the hunger for it is. On the other hand, while we are talking about, because in the previous lecture we have talked about positive thinking. So, if you are trying to cite something orally in your talk on positive thinking, you can bring a quote from Benjamin Chapman and say, these moments you fail are not the end, they are the periods in which you recollect thoughts, ideas, ambitions and change direction. My dear friends, there are occasions when one does not cite only the lines of the poems, the lines of the essays, but also at times the lines from some plays, the dialogues from some movies or the sayings from certain speeches. Now, while you are quoting, it is always to be seen or one always has to ensure that one provides because one actually has to show the obligation to the, to the owner of the original quote. Who quoted this originally? That is very important. Say for example, if we are quoting from Lincoln, the problem with the quotes on the internet is that it is hard to verify their authenticity. Especially youngers, I have a piece of advice. Please do not quote without knowing the authenticity. Internet is actually very easy to access, but one has to see whether the quote that you have taken from the internet was said in the same way by the original speaker. Now, how to quote? I mean, sometimes you can quote word for word, meaning thereby verbatim, verbatim, is not it? When a speaker quotes the statement word for word, then naturally one can follow this. I have provided the example here. If the quote is from APJ Kalam's biography, as you are all well familiar with uh, Kalam's biography entitled Wings of Fire, fine. So, we can write like this, we are all born with a divine fire in us. Then a public speaker shall use it as follows, 
In the book Wings of Fire, APJ Kalam had said, and then you will mention the quote, and of course, while in the written form, it will be under inverted commas. Or you can also say, Abdul Kalam said that we are all born with a divine fire in us in his biography, Wings of Fire. I think nowadays, uh, the present day generation is more intelligent and should know that not only while writing, but while speaking also, citations are very important. Now, another form of citation can be paraphrasing. I mean, to put the words of the original speaker in your own words. But while doing so, a public speaker uses the ideas of another person. But while doing that, what he does? He rephrases it in his own words. This is actually termed as paraphrasing. This also has an advantage over quoting here. You may not remember everything, fine, word for word, rather you are telling the essence. But at the same time, you are acknowledging the original speaker, the original author. One can also make use of one's own style and humor while one paraphrases. Sometimes you can see one changes some of the words, fine. But then at that time, he is not to be, fine, judged that he has actually some way or the other violated the rules, but he is actually, in a way he is acknowledging, but he is saying it in a different way. That is why it is actually rephrasing. How to paraphrase with oral citations? Here you can also get a mention of it. If somebody is referring to this particular point, each minute of speaking time requires one to two hours of preparation time, perhaps more depending on the amount of research needed. So, this is why it is in the written one, it can be in text, but if you are going to do it in the oral way, you must say Stephen Lucas emphasizes on the need for intense background research and hours of preparation before final presentation in the first chapter of his book, The Art of Public Speaking. Here, no inverted commas are needed because you are simply paraphrasing. Same way, while you are making uh, use of oral citations, one also need to see that there are three things which one must be very much careful of, who, what, when. Now, here you can find the examples. Of course, uh, this is uh, from uh, my own book where uh, you know you can say the authors, you can name the authors, addressed various areas of communication bordering on Indian situations, is not it? So, this is who. So, you are giving more emphasis on the authors, but when you talk about the content, what? So, naturally, you talk about the name of uh, the book and then when? Naturally, you are going to talk about a time that is 2009-2009 issue, 2009 edition. But my dear friends, even though citations make your talk beautiful, attractive, pleasant to the ears, but then some amount of caution is important. It is actually mandatory to practice to maintain some caution while you are citing. Do not give a general source of information such as the internet says, library, fine. Never use according to the internet, fine. Do not orally stage page number. As I have said, it is only for the written one. Avoid repetitive uses of full oral citations. After you have cited once, it is actually sufficient or adequate to mention simply the name of the author, fine. But in the first instance, you should take the full name of the author. Never read the complete written citation word for word during public speaking. My dear friends, oral citations make uh, one's talk not only authentic, credible, but also lends ears to so many. That is why while you are citing, while you are making oral citations, you have to practice utmost caution, utmost care, because it is actually the question of your credibility. Every beautiful content depends upon the credibility of the author, 
who said this as rightly has been mentioned by Maxwell, credibility is the leader's currency, but I would actually focus more on Thoreau who says the smallest seed of faith is better than the largest fruits of happiness. And what is that smallest seed of faith? The smallest seed of faith is when you are citing, please acknowledge, please recognize because when next time you are being cited, you will also expect the same world actually hinges on expectations and on true expectations and true expectations should always be met by a conscious, by an effective and also by a committed speaker. I think it is time to wind up this talk, wishing you all good luck and good night. Thank you very much.